Okay. And was the next big purchase Wu-Tang, Once Upon a Time in Shaolin? Yeah. So after Doge, um, the next big purchase was the One of One album, <laughs> Once Upon a Time in Shaolin, which is currently Got it. hidden in an unknown location. <laughs> <laughs> Right, and that sold for $4 million? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, but this is not an NFT. This is actually a physical item. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so, so why, you know, sort of go into a slightly different direction like this? Um, I think sort of, you know, as the DAO grew and um, their uh, sort of assets also grew with that, um, they started to realize that, you know, they could have an impact in not just the digital world, but also the real um, physical world as well. And um, I think uh, they just sort of became really interested in curating culture or, you know, these sort of high um, and rare, you know, unique collectibles that um, have a really historic significance or, you know, cultural impact, let's say. And so um, I think the one of one Wu-Tang album obviously was, um, you could say, even, even though it's not technically an NFT, it, almost as like the OG NFT in the sense that um, it's very, very rare and unique. And there's only one of them that ever exists. Um, and that really interested the DAO. Um, and, you know, sort of our plan with it, hopefully as well, is to, you know, similar to what we do with fractionalization, because, you know, rather it be in the hands of like one wealthy individual, it would be really great if uh, we could come in scoop it up and then share it with the world as well. So we're working on, you know, sort of ways that we could maybe sort of like host, um, you know, nonprofit concerts and, you know, have people um, like be able to listen to the album instead of it being in the hands of just one wealthy individual who's not going to share it with anybody else, right? Yeah, and you know, the Once Upon a Time in Shaolin has a kind of interesting history behind it. Um, it was originally created uh, you know, by a Wu-Tang affiliate and kind of thrown together. And then uh, Martin Screlly ended up buying it for, I think, $2 million. And then he went to prison and everything he had was sold off by the government, including this. And you guys bought it for four million bucks. Mm -hmm. and, and now you guys have it. Are you guys going to release an NFT of this or are you going to leave it just as a physical item? Um, I think sort of that's that's in the works right now. There's obviously a lot of um, things that we need to be careful of, dancing around um, legal issues as well. But, you know, our hope is that we can sort of, you know, not in a um, monetization way, um, share it with uh, as many people as possible, because that's obviously a value that we believe in. Okay. And, you know, you guys really started to get a lot of attention uh, from some of the big investment houses, one of which is Andreessen Horowitz, which is one of the biggest uh, Silicon Valley investors, really of all time. Uh, you know, I've I've met Ben Horowitz before. Uh, you know, these guys are worth billions and billions of dollars. I think they were the original investors in Facebook and a lot of other massive companies, and they actually invested into Pleaser Dow. Yeah, that's true. Um, they actually invested act um way back in May, so uh, right after we made the Sn Edward Snowden NFT purchase. Um, but. It wasn't sort of a, a announced until recently. Um, um, but yeah, I mean, I think uh, Pleaser DAO was, I think, the first DAO that um, they ever made an investment in. Um, and I think their, you know, their, their crypto group is very, very um, interesting and always sort of on the bleeding edge of things and interested in, you know, sort of seeding and backing um, Web3 projects that um, are interesting and also, um, yeah, just innovating and paving new paths. Um, so it felt like a perfect fit to have them uh, join the DAO. <laughs> yeah, and from what I understand, you guys are actually in the midst of another round of, of massive financing, which would, you know, essentially value Pleaser DAO in the billions of dollars. Um, I think so. <laughs> it's always sort of like weird to say or think of that, especially because our our governance tokens are mainly just used for, you know, sort of vote. Or, yeah, they're just used for voting, essentially. And what we do is we just vote on pieces that we're interested in acquiring or not interested in acquiring. Um, yeah, I mean, from what I understand, I mean, you guys are trying to position yourselves as like the Medici house of, of NFTs or like the MoMA, you know, the Museum of Modern Art of uh, NFTs. Is that is that an accurate statement? Uh, I would say so, um, sort of. The Medici's or MoMA of internet culture, um, 
or just, I guess, culture now because it's expanded beyond just the internet. But also the idea is just to mainly just to share it with, you know, as many people as possible. So instead of, you know, going to an, a museum and you don't feel like connected to the piece, let's say maybe because you don't own it, um, hopefully, you know, we have an internet museum where everybody can visit, but you could also own part of, you know, let's say you're looking at the Mona Lisa and you're like, oh, I also am a partial owner of this. And I feel like that's really cool.